Welcome back to another episode of the Mom Founders Table. And today we are answering your biggest question. How do I make more money in less time? I feel like this question is the most common question and it is the one with the most answers on it depends, right? It depends on where you are in business. It depends on your industry. It depends on what you offer, et cetera, et cetera. So this episode specifically today is geared towards moms who have been in business, who are recognizing that they are out of time, they're out of energy. And here's the thing, nobody at any stage of business has the desire to stop growing. But one of the best things that you can do is get really, really clear on what growth is. A lot of my clients, when they come to me, have gained the financial status and gained the financial freedom, but it doesn't feel like enough. And so this usually leads to them chasing more on the money side and or them realizing that no matter what sort of finances they gain, that they're not able to add money because they can't duplicate themselves. Right. So when we think about creating more revenue for our businesses, we instantly go to how can we do that when we are out of time, out of energy, and just how can we do that when we are out of time and out of energy? And this is a point that people reach when you have been in business for at least a year or so. So let's answer the question that we all have. Right, let's really address and get down to the nitty gritty here. How do we continue to increase not just business revenue, but profitability when we are out of energy and out of time? How do we continue to grow without sacrificing more time away from our families? How do we make a bigger impact with that impact, not directly impacting the amount of hours that we are working. When we go into business, we go into and feed into trading time for money. We are giving our time, our effort, our energy to grow something that we believe in. And then we run out of time, we run out of energy, we get stuck at some sort of plateau, right? And there is no way for us to continue growing in the way that we have gotten to that point. And so you've probably heard the saying of what got me here won't get me there. And this is why we reach a threshold in that, like we can't put more stuff on our calendar and or we don't want to, or there's not space, or we don't have the energetic capacity to be able to deliver. So you will see people that scale and scale in a way that's not sustainable. And that's where we see the burnout cycles. And inevitably, and unfortunately, a lot of businesses fail because We are so focused on the short-term revenue gain and chasing that high of bigger and bigger when it comes to our numbers that we don't consider the after effect. We don't consider the cost. And so this is why I always recommend no matter what level of business that you're at, no matter what your revenue is right now, that you always have standards and boundaries and that your health and your well-being and your fulfillment is prioritized because it is wonderful that people can scale and scale quickly, but the after effects are the things that people aren't talking about. We see the wins and we see the highlights and we see the great financial gain, but we don't see the toll that that has taken on women's health mentally and physically. We don't see the disconnection that that has caused in relationships. We don't see the spiraling thoughts, the sleepless nights. And these are the things that when we are considering growth and we're considering 
what we want our legacy to be, these are the types of things that we need to start considering when we are planning our growth. Because a lot of people plan growth and they say, I want to make X amount of dollars and here's all the ways we're going to do that. But what often isn't entering the conversation is how can I do this in a way that also preserves me, my time with my family, my well-being, etc. And so today I want to talk specifically about how we actually can earn more and increase not just our revenue, but our profitability when we are out of energy or out of time or out of both. So the first thing that I want you to consider is I want you to think about redefining growth itself. So a lot of times we are so focused on the financial gain. And in the beginning of business, this makes sense, especially if you have quit your job to pursue you know, entrepreneurship and you need this thing to work. This is the way that you provide your family. This is the way that you pay your bills, right? So there is this scarcity driven focus that we have that's like we are so all in and we're willing to do whatever it takes to make this happen. And at a certain point, we have to pivot that. We have to change the way that we are thinking about our growth and our further development of the business. Once we have reached that threshold of what we consider as stability or safety, once we have built something that feels like, okay, we have our feet underneath us now, once we are profiting more, and then there has to be a shift that occurs in the way that we operate. I did a whole episode about this shift specifically, if you want to head back and listen to that. But this is a shift that a lot of people don't make. And what happens is if you don't make this shift, then you basically continue operating like a solopreneur, right? So you may have a team of of people who are supporting you you may be doing you know multi six figures multi millions even but you are still so stuck in the business that it doesn't feel like you have any sort of freedom and you might have financial freedom but it doesn't feel free because of the impact of everything else and so this is a reason why we need to always be looking at what our North Star is, what we believe, and what we are defining growth as in different seasons, right? Because there are seasons of growth in businesses that are growth of the team, that are growth of our back end in the organization and how we are operating that are not, not directly shown outwardly but they are directly connected with the outward success that we have. Financial gain is not just about doing all the doing and taking action on the things to make money. It is about who we become in the process. It is about what we set up on the back end. It is about the support that we have in our network, in our team, and in our, and in our homes, truly. And so it is important that we don't just define growth by numbers. Yes, the numbers matter. Yes, we need to profit. Yes, we want to make more money. And yes, I absolutely want you to have financial goals, but I also want you to look at other areas of growth because the more that you focus solely on financial gain, the more you're going to chase and the more you're going to feel overwhelmed and scattered because you're not going through the necessary back-end work and the necessary personal development work that is actually needed to sustain a higher level business. And this is why you see a lot of the crash and burn cycles where people will, you know, scale quickly and then, you know, they either burn out so badly that they burn their business to the ground or you see people that scale quickly, they burn everything to the ground, they try to recreate themselves, they try to do things differently, but they're just addressing the business from a place of financial growth and numbers, which is only a part of it. So first and foremost, for you to be able to grow without adding more hours to your plate, I need you to look at the way in which you are defining growth and look at the different ways that you have grown your business and your leadership and your team and all of the pieces that you probably aren't considering. So this is why, again, looking at your business and having seasons, right? We cannot actively 
push. This is why every every big business that you can think of, there are things that they are that are kind of always available and then they will do like bigger pushes for things. And every business model is structured a little bit differently, but there is no business that is successful on the front end and the back end that is pushing constantly. This is why I often refer to business as like interval training. You have to have rest periods and those rest periods for your business can look like you reorganizing your back end, you looking at your team structure, you re you evaluating your vision and your values and making sure you have the right support in place, right? So it's all the back end work that allows you to create the financial gain. And so we need to be looking at that as part of our growth, right? Like, did I, I grew in this season because I learned how to operate differently as a leader. I learned how to step back and I learned how to delegate appropriately. I learned how to communicate with my team to empower them and build trust. That is growth. And so these are areas that we need to consider and be looking at. Okay, so as far as maintaining and growing your income and reducing your working hours, it is important to know that as a business owner, as a CEO, as somebody who is an expert in your industry, your value increases over time. And this is something that's often forgotten because every single time that you interact and get to showcase your skills, along with everything that you pour into yourself via coaching, mentoring, classes, trainings, books, all the pouring into that you do into yourself increases the value that you hold and allows you to do your job and make a bigger impact. So it is important for us to always be pouring into ourselves and being really honest about, are we just operating inside of our business and, you know, working with our clients and working with our customers, or are we trying to continuously grow? This is one of the things that actually for my clients can be a hang up, right? Because they're so busy in their business, that they feel like they don't even have time to hire me. They're like, where would I put that on my schedule? And of course, it's funny what happens because as soon as we get in there, it's like instant relief and they now have this place and all of a sudden time is cleared up. But that's besides the point. The point is, is that we have to reprioritize what is going to be the biggest needle movers in our business. And we have to learn to see that visionary time, personal development, leadership development, these things that we do outside of the day-to-day -day operations are more and most important for the sustainability and the longevity of our business. So when you're trading time for money, eventually you reach this cap right? To where you cannot take any more customers, any more clients, you can't produce more, you're out of time. And the idea of doing something passive may not work for the industry that you're in, right? There's all these ideas of like courses and classes and doing something one time and being able to sell it. And that may work for you. And there are plenty of industries that this can be applied to, that there is a, a wide lane open for this that people aren't fully utilizing. But with that being said, we also have to think strategically about what is in alignment with your work, the personalization, the type of work that you do. And these are all details that, you know, working with my clients who are in a variety of industries, it has to be tailored to you. But a lot of people will just jump on this train of like, oh, let me let me build something that can be passive. Well, truthfully, for classes, courses, memberships, anything subscription-based to work, it does require work. That being said, having some sort of one-to-many offer can increase, can increase your impact and increase the amount of clients and customers you can take while decreasing the hours that you spend. And so that is something for you to think about in your offer suite itself. And I'm going to get into some other things here that you need to look at to be able to decrease your working hours and maintain or grow your revenue. But before I do that, I want to tell you about something really special that I have uh, coming up and it is a free event. And this event is actually for mom entrepreneurs and it is a get your shit together boot camp. 
And I say it that way because I know that so many of you are buried and overwhelmed and it feels like you're just running from one thing to the next. And so I put together this free three-day event that we're going to be doing, and I'm going to be taking you through exactly the changes that you need to be able to be. I'm going to take you through the exact changes that you need to make in your business to get you some instant relief, to give you some time back so that you can see and have clarity. And again, this is free and we're going to drop the link for this in the show notes. So this is the business bootcamp for mom entrepreneurs, and it is a free three day event for you to get your shit together so that you can get some relief so that you can stop feeling so stressed and so overwhelmed all the time. So we're looking at front end stuff, back end stuff. I'm going to lead you completely through this, give you action steps, and it's going to be freaking awesome. So make sure you join us for that. Um, so here's, let's get into the good stuff, right? How to maintain or raise your income without as much time. The first and easiest way to do this is raising your prices. And this is why I brought up just planting the seed of you have continued to raise your value by continuing to pour into yourself. If you don't feel like you can raise your pricing, you need to ask yourself why. And if the why is because you are afraid of losing people, then you need to think about your audience, your standards that you're upholding and the boundaries and the bigger goal here. When we make decisions based on fear, it's never going to be sustainable decisions. And so raising your prices is always going to be the easiest step to implement because you're already doing these things. You're already spending this time working. You're already giving energy here. And most people understand a price increase. Depending on your industry, the price increase and how much you increase can look different. When you do the price increase, make sure you communicate it well and make sure that you have your clients and your customers understand why the price increase is happening. And if you don't feel like you can explain that, it's important for you to look at your value and your worthiness and how you are viewing yourself. If you believe that your price is set and it should be what it is forever, then, then we need to start thinking about, are you not actually pouring into yourself? Are you not learning and growing and developing? Because if you're not, then you should be, right? So that's the first and easiest way to increase your revenue, right? Is just have a higher price point. The next thing is to evaluate the current offers that you have. Evaluate the product suite that you have. What services can offer the biggest results for your clients with a smaller amount of time on your calendar? So you have to think strategically here. You have to think if you go back to the results that you've had with clients, what was something that you did that was super impactful, that the client really valued, that made a big change for them, that got them a big transformation that you felt like required less effort on your part? This is difficult because a lot of times we, we don't feel like we should be paid for our gifts. And <laughs> this kind of goes back to pricing, but it is a gift because it is your expertise. It is something that naturally comes to you. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be paid for it. So I went through this a lot in, in struggling and charging for coaching because I was like, well, I'm so, this feels like, seamless to me. You're just caring about people. You're giving them direction. You're giving them clarity like this, but it does require my emotional investment. It does require my time and it does require my energy. And so these are things that you need to remind yourself of as well. So looking at your, what you're currently offering in your business, what are the things that you have offered that didn't take as much time that did have a big impact that are still aligned with the bigger vision that you have that still help people, but don't require as much maybe hands-on time, right? Is there resources that you've created for certain clients that are sitting, right? I had a conversation with a, with a client the other day and she works with a lot of different brands and she was saying how she's created, you know, a few different resources. And I was like, you know, that those resources could really, really help people, especially if you make them specific. And it was something that she just didn't think about because she was just, you know, had created those and they were just sitting. 
These are things that it's hard to think about when we're really stuck in the busyness and we're stuck in the patterns of just doing what we've always done. We need to think outside the box here. We need to step back and we need to think bigger. We need to think about the most impactful thing. Go to the problem that your client is struggling with most and what is something that you can create for that problem that would give them immediate relief to that problem. So evaluating your current offers is going to be another way that you can um, increase your revenue, right? Is by taking things that maybe you're already doing or already created and uh, putting a higher price tag on those things or putting a price tag if it's something you're not selling, which kind of leads me into our next one, which is creating new offers in general. So a lot of people rush to create an offer after offer after offer. We don't need a bunch of offers. We do need a solid client journey. We need, we need entry points for people. We need to be able to take them on a journey and step into a next step and step into a next step and step into a next step. We want to be able to give our clients good transformations. We want to retain them. We want to keep them coming back. And so looking at your offers that you have now, do you have this client journey built out? Do you have a next step for all of your clients? And what does that next step look like? Another thing for you to think about is what is a method or a framework that you are continuously teaching? So an example of this is I have been working with my private clients and I have been teaching the same types of things, you know, in lots of different areas based on getting them organized in their businesses, you know, working on their team structure, working on their leadership and their communication, and then also, of course, helping them grow and scale. And so I created Mom Founders Inner Circle, and that's going to be where I'm teaching the Mom Founder Method because I finally sat down and planned and put this into a methodology and said, man, if every mom business owner had this, the world would change. The world would be a better place. They would run their businesses differently. There would be more happiness. There would be more peace. And so I saw the bigger impact that is possible with this. And so what is something that when you are working with clients, what are the things that you're often repeating? What are the things, you know, that are, and, and can you put those in a certain order to again, solve a problem that your client has? So developing new offers that are in alignment with the client journey that are taken from solutions that you're giving current customers and clients. And can you take those things and put it in a framework or put it in a methodology and teach it to multiple people? Because my capacity is limited for private clients, then I have to go into the struggle between, okay, I either stop taking clients which doesn't feel good on my heart because I know that mom entrepreneurs are struggling with balancing a busy business and being stretched between their personal lives and their professional lives. And so I feel like it's my duty to help these women. And so putting my idea into a framework that can change the way that they do business and their lives and their businesses forever is going to be one of the most impactful things I've ever done. So this allows me to serve more people, right? So how can you serve more people without it adding a bunch of more hours to the plate? So developing new offers, making sure that you have some sort of one-to-many offer, making sure that your client journey is built out for people to take a next step and retain them. And then thinking about, do you have some sort of method or framework that you're teaching and repeating to clients already. And then last but not least, I want to talk about deliverables. So I work with a lot of clients who either their work, their, their work can be hands-on, right? Like, and then I also have clients who offer a lot of deliverables. So I have a few clients that have agency models. And at a certain point, there is a threshold of where it's no longer serving you to offer deliverables with every single package. And so an example of this is one of my clients that has an agency. She has been seen as an industry expert for a long time. Her capacity is always stretched because so many people are inquiring to work with her. But the deliverables and reviewing deliverables and the planning for deliverables and the, the team time for deliverables is really capping her. 
And so we're going to be moving her and creating more consulting for her because people, when they come to her, want her expertise and want her brain. And so we're solving a problem and we're also taking the resources that she's created for clients and offering those. And so there's a way to do this creatively that that we have come up with that can reduce her hours by reducing the amount of deliverables. And again, depending on your industry, there's likely going to be some sort of deliverables involved, but you can reduce the amount of deliverables and it is always okay to think about that line of putting responsibility back on the client. For instance, if you have an agency and you're working with a business that also has a team and let's say you're doing their social media, can their team take the deliverables that you give and actually implement it across the social media? Look again creatively at like the little tasks that may be taking away from your well-being or taking too much of your time. And how can you get rid of those? It's also okay to just not offer things anymore because they've stressed you out. I know that sounds silly because a lot of times we think, oh, well, that might be a profitable offer or that's something that's working. But the question always comes back to, is it working for you? Is it working for your well-being? Is it working for you? Is it working for your family? Because if we only think in the vacuum of, again, finances and the business and the profitability, we're not considering the fact that we're humans. And that is a big mistake. So... These are different ways that you can increase your revenue or maintain your revenue, which is also okay because if we try to grow too fast, we can also crash and burn, right? Because we're not taking the necessary steps on the back end to be able to scale. So these are ways that you can increase or sustain your revenue while not adding hours to your plate. And if you have questions about this, please feel free to message me. I'm happy to talk about creative ideas with you. I love when you guys screenshot this and tag me as well. I appreciate you sharing it with other mom founders and entrepreneurs and helping them out too by listening to this. Make sure that you get signed up for the free event, the Business Bootcamp. The link will be in the show notes for you to grab your spot there. That is going to be interactive. It's going to be live inside my Facebook community, which is going to be incredible because there's so many awesome, amazing women entrepreneurs and mom founders in there. And so it would be an opportunity for you to network and connect with them as well. But we're going to get to your shit together. We are going to help you get the relief that you need so that you can keep running your business instead of your business running you. So thank you guys for listening and I will talk to you next week.